Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Dan E Cast with my co-host Dan. Say hello, Dan. Hi. Um, so they actually said hi. How about that? Because uh, I don't want this to become a stupid thing where everyone's like, "Oh my god, that's your thing. You don't say hi." <laughs> I just I'm, I got, I don't know what words. <laughs> yeah. This, hey, completely fine. Um. Anyway, so today we are talking about uh, the Shining and the follow up decades later known as Dr. Sleep, or called Dr. Sleep, titled Dr. Sleep, whatever. Um, we are going to be talking about my experience having read both the books, having seen all of the movies, um, and Dan's experience having read and finished The Shining, having tried to read Dr. Sleep, quitting that. Um, uh, they also have not finished The Shining movie, is that correct? Yeah, but I've watched enough videos on it to oh, yeah. know, so I, I, I know it. All right. I'm fine. Um, and then Dr. Sleep, that's basically what we're going to talk about, how certain things differ and why uh, they couldn't finish it versus why I could or any number of things. I mean, it could probably all, all be written down as I'm a fanboy, of course I finished it, but I struggled with Dr. Sleep too. Um, so we'll get to all that stuff. We're going to start with uh, with The Shining. Uh, first off, so Dan, tell tell me what you like, didn't like. We're going to talk about the book version first. Tell me what you liked about the book, what you didn't like. Uh, one more thing. My memory is bad, so you go right. first because I will. I can remember based on what you gotcha. say, but I can't pull from my own memory. I was about to say it's been a while since Dan finished The Shining, so um, my favorite part in the entire book is the hedge animals. The hedge animals. Yeah, the I like hedge, that part. The hedgerow animals. That, I can understand why they cut it for time or just for a different story because it's so different, but that's that was good. Yeah. It's it's not even like it was like crucial to the story, but it was still just like it, I don't know, it's like cutting part of your world out of the little mermaid. <laughs> you know, there's several things that I really really love about that uh, about the hedgerow animals, period, the topiary animals, whatever you want to call them. Um the the first thing, of course, is that you never see them move. Mm -hmm. um, they have all. The, Stephen King, I think Stephen King said this. Maybe someone else. It's always scarier to have seen that something has moved. Yeah, like the Weeping Angels, right? And stuff. Than actually seeing them move, and that, that's a perfect example. Uh, and, um, the Weeping the, Angels the, from Doctor Who. The knights from Resident Evil are similar. Oh, very Resident Evil Four. Yeah, yeah um, the knights in Resident Evil Four. That's the yes. Because it's not like you don't see you. They they're still and then they come to life. So it's not the exact same, but it's still similar in that they weren't moving yeah, and now they are. You know they're gonna move. Yeah, yeah. it's that, like that's playing. The same thing. It's, it's the like playing village and having all the statues. Like they knew what they were doing. Yeah. It's like oh shit, they're yeah. coming. <laughs> the scarecrows. The scarecrows never did. I expect the entire time, but that's Resident Evil Village spoilers. But anyways, uh. um, so but. Yeah, there's that, there's that, but at the same time, there's the, uh, there's the ghosts. Mm -hmm. So, yes, there are ghosts in the Overlook, but there's also another entity. There's mm -hmm. something else it's in just there. The, it's the evil of the Overlook, and right. then also the ghosts. Exactly. Um, the what what gets me is, and what is removed from Doctor Sleep, is that entity. Because mm -hmm. in The Shining, you have the topiary animals. They obviously moved. Yeah. Right? Um, but that you don't have anything like that in Dr. Sleep. So that's the, that's, I think that's a big designation between the two books where you have... There, there were the ghosts and there were Danny. Danny powering, you know... The, you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, conversation about mm -hmm. Danny powering the Overlook. Like the reason why it got so bad as it did so quickly is because Danny had yeah, he that was like power. a battery, right? Exactly. Um, but so why don't we see any of that with like Abra or anything? You know, there, there's especially ha there since has to be she's so powerful, right? There has to be other places like that around, right? That mm -hmm. that would draw off energy from her I, I just I, I find that, that I was think I've been thinking about that recently because I never thought about it before until um, someone mentioned very recently about how garbage the Stephen King written adaptation for TV was it had not Rebecca Romaine Stamos I can never remember the lady's name but uh, it had uh, the guy from Wings Stephen Weber who did the audiobook for it um, and then Rebecca De Mornay that's it uh, absolutely garbage movie terrible it wasn't followed... it his favorite for a while though in comparison King's? to oh yeah well, it's, it's, movie? it still is of course because you know it, it actually followed his vision yeah um, but so you liked the book 
The Shining. Yeah, I I don't like the movie. I the movie's bad. It's boring. It's not. It's not good. Yeah, I, <laughs> I... I don't care about his, like, oh my god, he puts so much effort into it, and anything that you say is bad is actually his intention. I don't give a fuck. It's bad. <laughs> it's not good. Yeah, it is... It's... It, you you know how I feel about it. There's no heart in the movie. It's, yeah. it's clinical. It's, it's like, it, the whole it's, point of the book was that it's this guy, and he... He removes all of the character mm-hmm. from Jack, and just turns him into this really cartoony villains like in the book you're like you're like oh i hope that he comes out okay and i hope him and his family are okay and i hope that they can come out of this and then by the end you're just like ah oh, damn yeah. but then with the movie it, he just starts out as an asshole and he kind of, he's like he's not a great guy in the beginning of the book but he's still he's trying to do better yeah That's yeah exactly but in the movie he's just like even before things get bad with like the typewriter scene he's just such a dick constantly (laughs) it's like there's no reason to root for him and it makes it boring because of course you're gonna root root for the the frail little wife and the little boy but there's no reason to root for jack anymore which is why the book is so good because it gives you a reason to root for the person that is becoming the villain right because as soon as you start watching the movie the, the the number one thing you're waiting for when you watch that movie is for Jack Nicholson to while out yeah because you know it's coming because first of all it's Jack Nicholson yeah exactly <laughs> you know he he's bad he, it's Jack. like Nick Cage like you yeah, watch exactly. a movie and you just wait for him to lose they, it they need to remake The Shining oh no it, like like scene for scene but instead of Jack but they, no 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 they don't need to remake it they just need to replace Jack Nicholson's performance <laughs> gonna, with Nicholas Cage's gonna, performance uh, what's it they, they replace the face yeah that'd be great oh yeah. amazing <laughs> like the deep fake that deep would be, fake yeah. that would be amazing because it would fit so perfectly I'm, surpri- even, I'm surprised Flanagan they're didn't even go and... able to do that <laughs> now with like case. the voice too they can right they can copy the. Like, I watched a YouTube video where the guy had been like building up his portfolio of videos and then in the last there was a video and then the one before that he it was entirely an AI that had copied his voice oh, and then no. the video after that he's like look at this this is crazy <laughs> there, there was some there was some just real quick a uh, little deviation there was some discussion i have a friend uh uh i think e- e- yeah eve harms on a uh, on twitter talking to another friend autumn christian about uh, <laughs> about getting an ai to tweet for autumn Mm-hmm. Um, I guess from Tumblr or something. I didn't really. It was very interesting. Yeah. But yeah, how like uh, lots. they uh, they could replace Autumn's uh, uh, Autumn's whole Twitter account and it would still sound like yeah. Her because, because now she, they can they the AI literally just reads everything that you've done. It's right. like okay, I got I got it. Like, yeah, I know the, what to, to do. To be more accurate, it's like twenty. You need twenty thousand tweets or something to go yeah, off of. Something yeah. Or like that. it's a it's a specific word count that you have to surpass, gotcha. not just the tweets. Okay. Um, so yeah, I hate the movie, you hate the movie. I love the book, you love the book. I can, I can, I think I could like the movie a little bit more if I look at it away from the book, but because the book is so unique in certain ways, I don't think that I can look at it that way. Because, like, the Percy Jackson movie, like, that's not a great movie. It's a terrible movie in comparison to the books, but I think I can still watch that and have fun with it if I just ignore the book books if i look at it and go okay this is its own thing someone having their own fun with this story it's not that bad but with the shining i can't even do that because first of all it's boring second of all it just it yeah it's boring and it takes everything that's charming about the book and and uh like tony like the way that they just turn danny into a creepy little kid it's like yeah Come on, man. Yeah. It's so lazy. It, it, That's what it, it is. is. It's lazy. It is. Honestly. And I've never been able to take that seriously, the way he runs around going... Ran, and you're not supposed ran, to. Ran. He's supposed to be a creepy little kid. And the whole thing in the in the book is like Tony's like kind of mysterious and he's interesting and you want right. to know more about it but then in the movie it's like oh creepy little kid that's <laughs> right. it that's, 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 that's all not, there is yeah there's absolutely no depth of character from the start Shelley Duvall see one of the things um, I, I don't want to get to the Doctor Sleep movie yet but the one of the things is the, the actress who played Shelley Duvall's part mm-hmm. in Doctor Sleep was a I'm sorry. She was, she was a, better a better actress. She was a than, better Shelley Duvall yeah. than Shelley, than Shelley Duvall, Duvall was. Sad. It's not that she was a better Wendy. No, she she Which was she putting was... more acting yes, into it. Exactly. Poor Shelley Duvall. She was just fueled, it's seemingly just based on her acting and the behind the scenes stuff and how she it how she was treated. 
the woman was just running on a script and anxiety. That's why it's so bad. <laughs> and it's like real fear <laughs> that she's yeah. like, if I screw up. That but, poor woman. But that, there's no also, wonder her performance is so bad. Look at what she was dealing <laughs> just, with. Here's here's the thing. Um, of course, like 95% of the people listening to this are con- completely going to disagree with uh, with us about this, of course. But um, that well about our take on the the shining movie mm-hmm. Kubrick's thing is a masterpiece yeah. whatever people say whatever so on and so forth this is our personal opinion but um, going back to what you said about how bad she was treated um, there was an article somebody finally found her in a little commune mm-hmm. talked to her and she said that she was treated just fine so are we That's are we talking about someone but are we talking video. about someone yeah but are we talking okay. about someone who has either like a PTSD trauma that they buried or are you talking to someone who's just literally just buried it because they don't want to think about it or did she literally rewrite her own memory just so she could get past it i I think that's it because there's video because i think it was kubrick's daughter did a documentary documentary Mm -hmm. about the behind the scenes and you can literally watch him just being an asshole to her yeah the the, whole many uh, the whole filming yeah many other actors have talked about how unbearable he was to work with yeah um me i don't like any i'm i'm a kubrick i'm not a kubrick hater i just don't like any of his movies i've never seen he's fine it's just like he's not as special as people try to make he seems to miss the point for me he seems to miss the point of heart or feelings or emotions Mm -hmm. period um, because his best characters are emotionless husks. Uh, yeah. Like, let's say, um, and they're just they're they're broken people, which I should like. Yeah, I should yeah. really like. It should be but, interesting. You should be. But they you don't should feel like want, people. They just yeah. feel like broken. Yeah, you should stock. want to go and dig and be like, okay, why are you like this? But yeah. with 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 Jack, it's just like, okay, you're just a dick. Right. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> well, with, 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 I don't care about why you are. You're just mean. Right, with most characters, most characters are, are, are vases that get, then get broken, that then, you know, get put back together mm-hmm. with gold it, it, that it's are like you know, art, better. His characters like art pieces that were made broken. Exactly, it's just a pile of shards on, on the ground. Yeah. You don't see the, the like, thing he, as a whole, he, he you don't didn't see it fixed. He sculpt the vase, he sculpted the pieces and then glued them together. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Like so, a puzzle, okay. like a puzzle, but right. a really bad puzzle. I can dig it. I can dig it. All right. So, uh, okay. Um, that's that's our thoughts. I don't want to hang up too much on this because I'm so more. We have four interested. things to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm more interested in talk. Well, we've talked about two so far. We have talked about the uh, the Shining and the Shining movie, um, but the the and everybody's heard me go on and on about. And Dan's opinion of the Shining is my opinion of of the Shining. So move on to something uh, that I was actually able to finish that you weren't, which was the Doctor Sleep novel. Yeah. Um, I. I enjoyed certain aspects of the Doctor Sleep novel. I enjoyed Andy mm-hmm. um, right up front. I yeah. enjoyed her. Yeah, she's great. Yeah, um, I enjoyed uh, Abra. Uh, mm-hmm. I enjoyed Dan's story. But here, but the thing that bothered me was is we didn't have any good villains. Everybody talking yeah. about how great Rose the Hat. No, she's I not didn't. really a villain. She's more of a just a antagonizing character, which right. I guess could be argued that that is what a villain is. But I feel like. A villain causes a, a you know, a great threat. But right. she she does that, but not really in a, a not villainous way. Who, who we should you know? be worried about. The person yeah. we should be worried about is this little girl who has this insane power um, that she doesn't know the extent of completely. Yeah. Um, and we... We know she has this insane power. We see her. We see her do these wonderful things, and then Rose the Hat's over here is just sucking the 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 soul out of steam out of people. Yeah. Um. She did. There, I never once in the book was I ever worried for Dan. Was I ever exactly. worried for Aubrey? Like she's at all. she she does villainous things, but not to the extent that it actually affects the story. Like, of course, you look at her and you read about her and it's like, yeah, that's a villain character. But then you read what she is inserted into and it's like, okay, so she's a villain but not of this story. And that's why I think the book, not the the movie is so good because they actually make her, like, a threat. Yeah, it, it, I, I agree. But, um, I'm going to add one more thing to that. One of the things that I, that, one of the, the here's here's just a guess from me. Um, a theory of mine, uh, as it were. I have a theory that that's the reason why the baseball baseball boy scene exists. The Stephen King to really set it off. Steve, to well, make Stephen you King go, like, oh, realized shit. that 
Abra and Dan weren't going to be in trouble here. Yeah. He knew they weren't going to be in trouble. So he needed a scene, and it probably all just happened naturally. Like, he was just writing, and he was like, oh, this is really going to mess people up. Um, and the I will say, the, the scene is far more disturbing in the movie than it was in the book. Um, Dan, you didn't get to that part, point, I don't, did you? I don't think so. I can't remember exactly where I cut off. But I know it was after Dan and Opera met. Right. Honestly, you could have just you could have just read like the second half of the book, and, and watched the movie, and you'd have been fine. Yeah. Because that's the really the only difference there is the uh, oh, and there's gonna be people that are mad that I say that too. But I know there's a there's a Doctor Sleep fans out there, but for the most part, most Stephen King fans agree. Uh, the book just wasn't that stellar. And it had nothing to do with the fact that he was revisiting. In fact, most of us like of the stuff from Dan. You know, f- catching up yeah. with Dan, finding yeah. out. I feel you know, like if it had been less of a, like, more of a cheesy kind of, like, coming-of-age story, I feel like that would have been a very entertaining, honestly. Just, like, watching Abra and Dan, and he's, he's like, yo, this is what's going on with us and how weird we are. And she's like, okay. Yeah, I would have been completely happy had there been no True Not. Yeah, I would have been completely yeah. happy with just those two I feel like and it, another that, haunted that's location what it is. or they, something. It feels like he had two ideas and he was like, okay, let's put these together. <laughs> but it didn't just... He used a very cheap glue. It just didn't work. <laughs> very, I like that very cheap glue. The glue, glue. is the story. He just shoved them together. <laughs> he got some dollar, some, some dollar Tree glue. Yeah, it's not even Elmer's. It's right. just <laughs> like Sticky Tack or something. Right. Like it, It's not that... It's like oh, that's They're funny. both amazing ideas on their... And if I... Well, you don't know about the Dark Tower series. Like, you haven't no. read that yet, so you don't no. know about the uh, Cantoy and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. If you read that, the true knot is from that universe. Okay, that's um, cool. they, They're psychic vampires, and the, the, I, people are out there, Cantoy and true knot, not the... I understand that. Calm down. Calm down. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying there's... There, there's a certain aspect to them that pops up in the Dark Tower series, and I don't want to spoil anything should Dan want to go and read them. Yeah. So I'm trying to be... There, there's whole, like, species. There's the Prim. There's all this amazing lore and everything in the Dark Tower universe that then bleeds over into his real-world novels. Um, and that's I think that's the... I'm not yeah. sure anybody has yeah. done that before. That's why um, I like... Um... I, I, I really like overarching stories yeah. like that. And that's why I like stuff like his stuff. Because right. it has... And it's not like outright where like you see like Wendy Torrance pop up and like Carrie or something. <laughs> it's a, just like it's right. little stuff. And that it, if you've read it, it's like, oh, I like... It's just the little stuff that if you know it, it's like, oh, yes. I see you. Uh, one, one of the most brilliant... Ca- well, there's two there's two things I want to say real quick as a Stephen King fan, kind of fanboying over here, you talking about that thing. Two of what I consider genius uh, characters popping up in other Stephen King books. There's a there's a book called Rose Matter mm-hmm. um, where a woman runs away from her abusive husband, goes to live, not a commune, but a place for like uh, abused women kind of deal. Yeah. She meets a character named Cynthia, or Cindy, who's a very, very small character, very small side character. He then puts Cindy, this very small side character, off in this other book called Desperation. And he does it again in Regulators, which is kind of like a... it. It's it, it's very strange because uh, Desperation and the Regulators have the exact same cast of characters, names, everything, but their personalities are a bit different and their lives are, lives are a bit different. He released one of them as Richard Bachman. Uh, we'll talk about that one day if you ever read a Bachman book. Um, that's his... That's him going, I want to be able to, I want to see... I don't want to be associated with this. I well, want to do what I want. No, well, he, he wanted to know if he if he could get a publisher again based solely on his writing. Yeah. And yeah. not, you know, because he was Stephen King. Because people were literally joking, gotcha. saying that they'll publish anything from Stephen King now, even his laundry list. It's one of the, He's one of the first people I've ever heard someone say that about. Um, and another another time he did this is with Thaddeus Beaumont from The Dark Half. And I don't want to tell you too much. I don't know how how far down the Stephen King rabbit hole you're going to go. I don't want to give you too many spoilers. But The, the Dark Half, that book focuses com- totally on Thaddeus Beaumont, Thad Beaumont. But Thad also pops up in other books. But he's never in the books. He's only mentioned in the other books. And you literally see his entire timeline from the time The Dark Half ends all the way to his death 
but it's all off screen. It's all in other books. Like people will be sitting around, hey, did you hear about you know Thad Beaumont or so on and so forth? And I thought that I thought that was really really cool because usually it's like you said, you know, like you know uh, Wendy pops up or you know yeah. Dan pops up to fight it's alongside like, like Roland the, in the Dark the Tower. The Disney or conspiracy theories and like where you like <laughs> you see Rapunzel and Flynn and like Frozen. Yes, it's like. That's a little much, but, like, I like the little <laughs> stuff, you know? Right. S- same here. And he does have the bigger stuff. I mean, the dude wrote himself into the Dark Tower. Um, he is a character in the sixth Dark Tower book. Okay. It's good, though. Um, it's not the way you would think. It's like, oh, my God, this guy's just yeah. trying to... He's so full so of So it's himself. like Stan Lee and Marvel. But, but the, the whole point... The reason why it works in... Yes. The reason why he works so well in... In Song of Susanna, even though the book is hot trash, the reason why him writing himself into the book works is because the entire Dark Tower series is so meta. Mm -hmm. It is all about story. Like, uh, you have uh, stuff from Harry Potter, uh, Marvel, all different kinds of stuff popping up into uh, the Dark Tower universe. And the Wizard of Oz is a heavy thing um, in there. They literally go to the Emerald... You know, what is it? <laughs> Emerald Castle, Emerald Kingdom, whatever the fuck it's called. Yeah. Um, they literally go there at one point in time in book four, I believe it is. Um, so it's all about story. Um, so him writing himself into his own story makes sense because he's freaked out when he sees these characters show up at his door. It's like, wait, blah, 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 blah. Why you, I, you, <laughs> you're my creation. Why are you here? And it also has a lot to it has a lot to say about authors who consider their work their babies and all this other stuff and um, that that weird I, I find it weird anyways that someone would take their creative uh, venture and consider it their child. Um, it's well, just, I think it's less their child and more of their creation. It's it's not they. I got that. Some like, people treat them like babies. Though, I, 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 well, I know, I know, yeah. but like uh, it's like. I kind of understand it because I have some characters where I'm like, I love you so much. <laughs> you are amazing. I Fair. made you amazing. And I wish you were real. Yeah. And it's just like, I think it's just like pride. And if someone were to disparage them, you'd probably get a little upset. Yeah. Or if not, a lot upset, right? Yeah. See, I'm not like I, I think it's more just just pride, honestly, and being like, this is a good thing that I did and I know it's a good thing. That, that, may, like that makes it. sense because I'm not proud of too much I do. So I'm just like, I look at things and I'm like, it's a thing. Yeah. It, it exists. I only have like like two characters that I'm like, yeah, hey, you're that's, amazing. That's, that's two more than me, so you're doing good. You're doing good. Um, so yeah, Doctor Sleep, uh, if you, there's going to be spoilers here. Um, I don't think, that you're never it's already been spoilers. You're, yeah, you're never going to, but I'm going to talk deep spoilers. Uh, I mean, you, I might, but I don't. I don't care. I okay. gen- generally the, don't care about the spoilers. ending of. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the ending of uh, Doctor Sleep, the book, is vastly, vastly different from Doctor Sleep, the movie, because Flanagan's film is a sequel both to Shining, the book, and Shining, the uh, it it's and the the shining movie he he managed to blend them both together and give us the ending he even did uh because in the film version of the shining yeah it doesn't uh, work down. what what's his face i always forget his name um the the old man yeah yeah dick holler yeah, sorry yeah. i always forget i always want to call him richard or rob for some reason anyways dick uh well his name is richard cuz his name yeah. is dick anyways but uh dick dick dies in in the shining yeah. the movie kubrick's version which i've always hated um, and then... It doesn't make any sense, honestly. It's just... I mean... Yeah, it literally it, comes out of nowhere, because Jack just comes around the it, corner, exactly. and he's like, ah! It's like, okay, he was just like, okay, I need a death in here. <laughs> this, dude, this dude went all that way, didn't even get to tell Danny hi, got a, caught an axe <laughs> yeah. to the chest. Anyways, it, it was... It's, it's yeah, it, it's pointless at that point. Just take him out if you're just gonna do him like that. that yeah. That's how I feel. But... Flanagan was able to, but Doctor Sleep, the book, doesn't open because we open with what Andrea, right? Um, we, do we open with? Yeah, no, we open with do. Dan. And no, no, go, I think you do. We open with Dan maybe going it's through his second bad, chapter. Yeah, know. it's the second chapter because we open chapter. with Dan in his. Give me the book. Um, in the destitute. Uh, the apartment like he, with the yeah, lady exactly, and the baby. With the, with the baby with the the full diaper. Yeah, lockbox. We open with Dan. Okay. Um, it opens with Dan, um, and we're to we. We, we go through uh, his his uh, spiral into, you know, trying... He gets to the, the place where his father was. And he's and then we, we leave him... At, he, after he hits rock bottom, after he what, wakes up underneath an overpass, something like that, he cleans himself up, so on and so forth. Uh, ends up in a little town uh, where he where he mans the, the little train yeah. that goes around, <laughs> which is funny because 
if you go all the way over to the end over here, there's a children's book. Oh yeah, I remember yeah. that. So the the train is that's from uh that's Blaine the Pain from uh from Wastelands and Wizard and Glass, which is a Dark Tower series. It's an ode to that anyways. Charlie the Choo Choo kind of deal. Um anywho, but the with oh, I forgot my train of thought where I was going with this. Um we were talking about the differences. So uh the this one opens up, you know, you go you go through the paces, you meet Abra, but it's at the point where there's the shootout at the park. Mm -hmm. That's where everything... After that, everything changes. Yeah, I remember that. Because in the book... I don't Dan, remember. I remember it ringing up. Right. Ringing Dan and Abra end up going out to the location where the uh, to Sidewinder, Colorado, where the Overlook burned down. Mm -hmm. um, in and, and then they fight... Oddly enough, I think they fight uh, Rose the Hat in a tree stand or something like that, some elevated thing. It was a horrible ending, uh, one of the worst endings he's ever written, and Stephen King's written some horrible, horrible fucking endings. But uh, somehow, Flanagan, I'm not going to say somehow, because Flanagan said it wasn't all that hard. No, um, it's, it's not that hard to you'd be better than epic fantasy fight. In... <laughs> epic fantasy. That's yeah, great, yeah, it's not that hard. You got, you got your overpowered different. superhero against Lex, Lex Luthor. You got yeah. Superman versus Lex Luthor. I mean, come on, we know how this is going to end. And it's, it's not even that bad of a... It's not even that, like, hard of a train of thought to go to because literally you just think, okay, well, in the movie they didn't do the ending of the book, so what if I just do the ending of the book? Right. It, exactly. Um... With, with this one, Flanagan had the had the, the weight on his shoulders to be able to make a sequel to The Shining, a follow-up yeah, to it. Yeah, because if you made it, uh, if he just made it this uh, sequel to the book, then right. movie fans would be mad. And right. I don't think anyone re would really care Somehow if he, he made managed it. to make, yeah, make I don't think anyone happy. genuinely would care if he only made it a sequel to the movie, but he did make it a sequel to the book, and that's why it's so good. Because yeah. he didn't just go, okay, I'm just going to please the fans of the movie. I would like to make this good in comparison to the movie and the book right because and i think so where, i think where he succeeded the most is that he wasn't trying to make a better film than the shining he made his own movie yeah yeah he was because, just trying to do his own thing with the pre-existing right movie. even the even the easter eggs or the throwbacks or whatever some people didn't like the fact that they went back to the overload so on and so forth because they thought it was just fan, good fan service wrap but around. he had to he had to do something and the crazy Bring part is he, he put the ending of the shining the book at the end of Doctor Sleep, the movie, yeah, with the boiler and the sacrifice mm -hmm. and all that stuff. I'm just sitting here. I'm like, that. It, it's so so brilliant. Mike Flanagan is killing it. I will watch anything. Uh, I haven't had time to watch his Netflix uh, specials, like the the Haunting of So and So and the Haunting House. of whatever. Yeah, and Bly Manor or whatever. Bly Manor, I think, is someone else. That's turn of the screw. No, Flanagan was it behind. Is? Yeah, yeah, Flanagan was behind. Oh, that. I thought it was two um, The first people. one was a House on Haunted Hill, of course, and then the next one, Bly Manor, was a Turn of the Screw. Is what that's. Based I thought on. he did Hill House, not. He did both of them. He might oh, he might not okay. direct it, but he he he's the one who produced it. He's the okay. same showrunner, um, as it were. But uh, I'm I'm very upset that his uh, revival isn't getting made. Same as I was when I heard Josh Boone's uh, revival isn't getting made. I want to see one of these directors do revival mm -hmm. because they have such a passion for uh, for the source material. Um, it's it's an amazing book. It's one of my favorites. That's the problem. I would, that I would love for you to read it eventually. That's, I think that's the problem that probably came out of the the Shining movie is he just didn't care. He just saw. He got the source material, and he's like, okay, I'll make well, it a, a movie. He's a fan. He's a huge fan. Um, Mike Flanagan is just a... No, Kubrick. Oh, Kubrick. Kubrick, uh, Kubrick should have made his own That's what I'm saying. Movie. Like, I think I think what happened is he didn't actually really care. He was just no. like, okay, I got this. I'll, I'll go do something with it. Yeah, Stephen King Stephen King said um, the problem with Kubrick is he didn't believe in ghosts. He didn't believe yeah. in magic. Yeah. He didn't believe in any of that stuff. You had Which is a... funny because the movie is so often debated. Like, oh, is there ghosts or not? Literally, the freezer door is unlocked. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Sorry. If there's not ghosts, then it's the Invisible Man. Yeah, uh, there's an entity in the Overlook, and there's ghosts. And Danny is is a battery, like he said. That's exactly what happened there. Um, so as far as Doctor Sleep, we we just like we did the last couple times we we've, we've done this. Um, and we, there's more episodes to come. We were worried, well, not worried. I was worried about getting this uh, office done so that we can do this without any background no noise or anything. Uh, there might be a slight echo. I'm not sure how how good the audio is out here. But anyways, uh, next next week um, we're gonna be talking about the Hunger Games. 
Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Dan has read all of them, even the prequel. So is no, Mar- not yet. You I, haven't. Okay. I, I so read the beginning of it and I gave up on it because yeah. she has. I can find the audiobook probably. Okay, and so run through it. yeah, you can blow it's through it. It's not that long. Yeah, because um, anyways, but so we're going to be talking about the Hunger Games. Uh, that's why I didn't. In that's why I didn't title this podcast slash video so whatever you want to call it. I didn't call this Stephen King whatever or King theme because we're going to be talking about other things. Anyway, so Dan has listened, not listened, watched the movies, read the books, listened to the books, whatever. I have not uh, read any of them. I'm not interested in them whatsoever, but I am interested in the cultural phenomenon of them, so I will be watching the movies. We should do the dumpster fire that is divergent. I hate those books. <laughs> I hate those How movies. How many movies did they make? Did they make all the movies? Yeah, they made all they of them. They did? Okay. Yeah. So here, if you, you've you read all the divergent books? No, I read the first one, but we can rage about that one anyways. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm fine with whatever. We can just probably book. talk about like YA dystopian tropes or something next yeah. time. It doesn't have to just be Hunger Games. We can start like, yeah, like, yeah. like this. We start talking about Doctor Sleep and The Shining and all of a sudden we're, you know, we're on other topics. So, uh, but we've, we've, we've covered all of this stuff. In your opinion, so far, out of all the stuff that you have read, I, I'm not sure if I've asked you this before, what's your favorite Stephen King, or even his movies that you've seen, you may not Well, have... I've read two books so far, so... <laughs> Pet Cemetery and The Shining. Oh, no, I have, I have read three, never mind, because I, re- I, did read, I did read Pet Cemetery. so I, I don't know, I put them all equal. It, it was a Carrie... It was Carrie, Pet Cemetery, Cemetery and, the, and Shining. the Shining. And you didn't get through didn't finish Sleep, Doctor Sleep. Doctor Sleep. Okay. Because um, they're all good in their own ways, and I don't, think, I don't think it would be appropriate to rank them with each other. Why would you say, what is your, so far, what's your favorite? I like, don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't think that okay. I, I could, Fair. because they're all, they're all good in different ways, so it's not... Yeah, I, I don't bounce around on my favorite. My favorite is and will probably always be it. But I bounce around with like my number twos all the time. Like, is it Pet Cemetery? Is it Revival? I think I did like Carrie a lot. I think probably if I had to Carrie, but I like all of them pretty equally. Cool. Because I right. think Carrie is the one that I would reread yeah. again. You also have the uh, the 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 guidance of uh this this fanboy for a father and be like stay away from this trash and that's, that's probably the ones that dan would probably go read that's the that's the funny no, part. i don't know because okay. I, I don't like rewatching things really i, I, I love... like i don't like wasting my time i like i like just doing something that i know i'll like and that's why i just reread things so often i would love for you to read elevation i have the audiobook if you want to listen to it i would love for you to read that one just so that we could discuss it whether or not you like it or not because it is such an sjw dumpster fire like it is everything that you know everybody complains about like on the conservative side of things Mm -hmm. like the things that they complain about they don't actually exist well they just kind of think it well it's like when when you know when uh people try too hard Mm -hmm. like they're lit the keyboard warriors like they're not actually going to do anything to enact real change they're just going to sit around and talk about it right um so that's the kind of thing that i feel with with stephen king uh, when when he did that, he was like, "Oh, guys, look look how liberal I am! I'm so fantastic! I'm a wonderful person! I'm gonna I'm a, I'm gonna have this guy with the savior savior complex come in and save save the lesbians white savior yes Woo. lesbian savior anyways, but <laughs> I did I had a problem with it um on a, on a very basic level uh, it just felt like that to me where he was just like waving his flag in the mm-hmm. air going look at me look at me I'm an ally." Um, and the, I just, he, but he's done it in other books so, so well, so much better that this one is such an anomaly for me. It's almost like he didn't write Honestly, it. Honestly, because of the time period that it came out, that's probably literally what it is. It's probably yeah. literally him going, I gotta make sure people know. <laughs> that I'm not. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. The terrible person. <laughs> yes. Um, it's funny. Another thing, there's a scene in Institute where, uh, where two characters, one of them is, I think one of them is adult. And one of them is a uh, preteen or young teen, and one of them makes a crack at like uh, Trump or something like that, and they fist bump because you know, right, right, that's the face. What? Right? <laughs> but but here's the thing: there are people in the world like that. Like they, yeah, we both hate this person. Fist bump, you know. But there are people out there like that, right? So it is cringe, hella cringe. But there are people out there like that because you know Stephen King's like that. Mm-hmm. He he's out there right now. He'd be the type of person to walk to walk up to someone and go. 
Trump. Fuck Trump, right? Yeah, you know, <laughs> but it it and it's it feels more it do, it doesn't feel like it comes from a place of it, authenticity. Yeah. It feels like it comes from a place like activism. I want people to like me. Yeah. Pro- performative activism. That's, that's exactly, that's exactly that's what, what it that's feels what it is. Like. That's what it's called. Um yeah, it also from, you know, this is also coming from a person who has two videos up on his channel, one of them is <laughs> fuck Trump. But anyways, uh that was that was just to get rid of like a certain subset of my my viewers who were just anyways that that's a whole other story but uh the it i I would like to i would like for you to read elevation if you if you hate it i don't expect you to get any farther into it it's a super short book it's like uh, not even a hundred pages and the font it's probably it probably should be about 50 pages is what it should be if the font was normal so it's basically a long short story is what it is um, but he's, he's done these things better. I think, uh, the drawing of the three is one of the best books about civil rights ever written. Um, and I don't think there's people out there right now, you know, especially not white folks rolling their eyes, but, um, I think the interaction between, uh, Detta, um, Suzanne, whatever you want to call her, this, this woman has like a dozen different names throughout the course of the series. It's Detta, Odetta, and Susanna. They call her, uh, Su- Susanna at the point, uh, but, uh, her being a civil rights uh, activist and Roland being like the neutral. Um, he has no idea about racism, any of this stuff. He's not even from this world. He's like, y'all are crazy. <laughs> are you trying to tell me that they hate you just because of the color of your skin? And then Eddie over here, who's from a completely different time because Detta is from like the 60s and 70s. Mm-hmm. Eddie's from the 80s. It, it's just these two, all these cultures really mash together. And it's one of the best I feel as, as as a white person who has no you know no dog in this fight uh it it it, it felt like uh it, it felt stronger than anything he's done uh recently mm-hmm. and that was one of the things that was strange about the um the the casting of the Dark Tower movie um that people were worried about um and it had nothing to do with the fact that it that they uh race swapped uh Idris Elba uh, you know the, the Roland and had Idris Elba's play. It's like, how are we going to do this? The second one, where you know the whole point of the second one is, you know, the clash of these characters. It's because... easy. He just he's not experienced it. You know, if well, that's the problem that they had. Well, it's... I'm talking about the, the adaptation. That's, the... that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It, it's it's easy if he's from a world where it doesn't exist and he's a dark guy. Then going to like no, but what I'm saying is Detta Detta. One of the things that Detta is so pissed off about is th- these white men. That mm-hmm. she didn't, she didn't got stuck with, <laughs> and that was like, yeah. So what? If if Roland's black, you don't have that, you, you don't have that contrast. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. Okay. Um, and I guess they could have done with Eddie. Um, the other. Yeah, that, I mean, it's not fun. like the other guy does. Right, but uh, still. and I'm not even. So saying it that. could be a thing where she's like, oh, stupid white guy, and he's like, huh? What are you talking about? And she's like, <laughs> what do you mean? Much, what am I talking about? That's, that's, that's pretty much that's pretty much what happened. You know, Eddie understands it because he's from our time yeah. but we're rolling from the world moved on and that is just not an issue anymore because it you're worried about monsters and honestly you know, I, think, I feel like it stuff. could be even funnier since he's played by a black actor now and she's like what do you mean you don't understand <laughs> it's racism that's, that's, okay yeah that, look at you <laughs> yeah that, that, it's racist well, it, it's not even like i had a i didn't even have an issue with it but people did have I, an issue that's, with the, it. that's what and, i'm saying like I, I think it could be more interesting than it was originally right. with him being white it could be more exactly. interesting with her yeah. being like look at you what do you mean you want you don't <laughs> understand hella true it, exactly um it it's just funny the way people get stuck on certain things you know when uh it has to be this yeah. thing a character has to be these things um but yeah, the going back with we, we get off on t- I get off on tangents and I take you with me. I understand that. Trust me. I'm not saying we. I get off on tangents and I take you with me. Um, but uh, for me, oddly enough, I, I I'm gonna say something possibly a little controversial. I it's a book. No one cares. I like huh? It's a book. No one really. Well, no, cares. no, no. It's what I what I get. I it's not a book. That's oh. the thing. I like Doctor Sleep the movie more than the Shining book, the Shining movie. Oh yeah, definitely. I yeah. I like it more. It's... I think Flanagan's film is better than anything King Kubrick any of them did. Yeah, it's a it's a just objectively good. Like people are always like art is subjective. Yes, but on the other hand, if you compare a little doodle that a, a one year old did to like a painting by like a, a seasoned painter. 
obviously one is better than the other, and that's mm. what this is. It's obviously just in so many ways. Like, you can like things better than the other. Like, I, Tales, not Tales, the pre-sequel of the Borderlands games, terrible game, but it's my favorite. Like, 2 is Why do objectively you think it's a terrible the game? first. That's a, that's... It, map design, it's just boring really? other than the story, but that's unrelated, but it's, it's just... <laughs> no, it's related. It's, it's interesting to me. The th- art is subjective, but it is also objective in different ways like you can't you can look at a movie that has like terrible writing terrible acting terrible cinematography just everything and just be like yeah i like this but this movie is better there's no question about it Ob- you can literally say you, that it is better if you want to say objectively objectively mike flanagan's film is good yeah. it is well shot yeah there aren't any gaping plot holes that I can think of. I'm sure somebody will say, oh, but there was this... I'm, I'm sure there'll be something. But um, it, it's objectively you. It's objectively a good experience. And it's better than the book. I, I don't think that can really be yeah. argued, honestly. It, with, because if people were saying it's, it's poorly slow. shot, it's, you know, whatever, it's poorly it's written, ob- objectively... No, I don't think no. there's it. I don't think it's beautiful, and the acting yeah. is amazing. Like the whole time we were watching it in theaters, because no one was around because yeah. we got to it so late. But I was like, oh literally. my god! Like because like, I kept Ghost Town. literally, I kept noticing the what's his face that was playing Danny. Like he was mimicking Jack. J- yeah, 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 yeah. He was mimicking the way that he acted Ian. as Jack. And then when Aubrey was like, pres- pre- yeah, him. When Aubrey was possessed by Danny, she was mimicking him too because it was Danny, and Danny's actor was acting the way that his father's act. It's it's good. Hey, it's it's one of those so things. I don't, interesting. I don't, I don't want to. I, I don't want to say objective like, because it still is our she... our subjective opinions about how good it is. Now, there's going to be people who don't like it, and it's going to be a subjective yeah, thing. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I had something on the tip of my tongue about the uh, ob- objectively. I don't think there's anything wrong with the film. I, I don't. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe we still. We still can't say object. We probably can't say objectively. But okay. At the least, it's better than the book because I feel like there yes. are things that you can I feel, say. I feel like, like he the fixed writing everything that was bad about better. both both properties. Yeah. yeah. All four. Let, let's put uh, all three proper. Let's say three properties. Uh, you have The Shining, Kubrick. You have King Shining, Kubrick Shining. King's Doctor Sleep, yeah. Flanagan's so Doctor like... Sleep. He fixed those three that he had nothing to do with. Yeah. Every single problem they had, he fixed. Yeah, because it's not like the Shining book was bad. Yeah. It is. It's just better than it because of the things that it did. It's not like it's better than it because one is bad and one is good. It's right. just not even higher quality. It's just it did more things that gave it room to be better because it had more room to... Yeah, it had more room to grow and actually be better. Right. While The Shining was very contained within itself with very few characters, it was in one location the entire thing. It had a very set story with the Doctor Sleep movie. It's not like all over the place, but it, it has a lot more characters and it moves a lot more. And it has this the themes from The Shining get expanded upon a right. little bit more in that too. And the only th- the only thing that I wish Flanagan would have done that King didn't do in Doctor Sleep, or I wish that King would have done in Doctor Sleep, is give us a little more like did the with the entity because when the when the Overlook is burning down, this like black bat wing shadow comes flying out of mm-hmm. it. Um and you also hear like roaring and whatnot that's yes, not it's a kinda fire, like you know? the what they were trying to do in Pet Cemetery when he's yes. going to bury whichever one, but at the very end. Yes. It, and it, he it, sees, like, the stupid face. It's But, like, because in yes. the book, it's, yes. like, he he's hearing, like, the noises and stuff. Yeah, and that, should. it's kind of like what he did there. It, that, yeah, because that's, like, it's that not seems ever explicitly, very internal. Yeah. That, it, it's, it's, like, it's he, all about Lu- Lewis's he's fear. He's noticing it. He's, like... Hmm. There's something Something's going on. Something's going on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah, it, but it's like the topiary animals. Once yeah, again, yeah. there's something going on. I just don't know what the fuck it is. Yeah. yeah. I think that's more scary than if they had got up and jumped at him or anything. Because it, it's like, it's... I just wish there was something like that in Doctor Sleep. I wish, yeah, yeah. I wish there was a sign that there that there's an entity that is not anthropomorphized like the not anthropomorphized either but like uh you know the put true, the true not are humans you yeah. know um the the true the put true, into something right. to be there i and wish be there was scary. something that wasn't human 
you know, that... I guess they kind of did it at the end of. when he was being possessed, because you could tell that it it wasn't him, but at the same time, it's still... Oh, yeah, that does it's, happen. It's still having, it? like, a shell to put the the fear into. It's still like, okay, what am I scared of? I'm scared of Danny because he's being possessed. Yeah. But with the topiary animals, it's more like, what am I yeah. scared of? The topiary animals. Why? I'm not sure, but something's going on. But with Danny being possessed, it's more, I know why I'm scared of him because this is happening. But with the other stuff, it's like, I'm scared of this, not quite sure why, but I know something is making me scared right. because of it. Uh, and throughout the throughout the entirety of the Stephen King universe, you find these entities and these uh, things that feed on fear. Yeah. Uh, Pennywise is, of course, the biggest one everybody points at. But you also have the true knot. They suck the steam out of you, but you taste so much better when, when, you're, when scared you're scared. Because you know? it's so much more. It, I, I actually like that it's a lot. Because yeah, I feel, it's, like, it's, I, yeah, I feel like it's kind of like Monsters, Inc. in that way. Where like, Ooh, that's good. Because I, I think it's probably less the fear and probably more the overload of fans? emotion. <laughs> think the writers were fans of it. Maybe, but I, I think it's more probably the, if you really looked into it, it or tried to give a reason to it, it would be the overload of emotion, and fear is easier to overload. Fear or sadness or anything negative is more easy to overload than happiness, because you have to, you have to do a lot more to overload someone with just being so happy, and that's like, yeah. that's the plot of Monsters, Inc., and like, you see by the end that they've gone to like, telling jokes and stuff to get that that fuel, but right. it does make sense why. Also, why the, animals the can fear. animals can sense when you're afraid because you yeah, let off yeah. you know pheromones or you certain things in either your sweat or whatever exudes from you. Animals can tell when you're frightened. They can also tell like just when we're happy too because right, I know with right. our animals when we're happy about they're stuff they jump up around, and they're right. like, "Whoa, what's going on? You guys yeah. are happy." What Especially are we happy Ash, about? she's like, "Oh, what are we celebrating?" Yeah, yeah. It's like I, my <laughs> sister laughing. Like my my sister will laugh and go, ah, "Wait, what's funny?" Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, it, it does make a lot of sense within the story. It's like, why does that add so much to the experience? Well, it's because there's more going on. When it's just someone sitting there, like, and you're eating their soul and nothing's happening. But when they're also scared, yeah. there's more, just, there's literally more going on. You're just eating their soul on. and nothing's happening. I love that you said that. You're just eating their soul and nothing's happening. Oh, this is, this soul is so blase. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's great. But it, yeah, uh, it's a very cool, just a little added feature. Yeah. Like, uh, it. It also opens the opportunity for, like, the opposite of that, where, like, they're, like, happy vampire feeders. Right, <laughs> Like, yeah. they just feed off of happiness. They just, they just like, they suck up. Pop- <laughs> they, they just show up to birthday parties. That's what I was just about to say. They show up at kids' birthday parties. It's like, woo! <laughs> He's like, yay, I'm so full. <laughs> now I can go hibernate for 27 years. Oh, that's great. Or they uh, show up at, like, weddings and stuff. Wait, wait, I should I should write something like that. Some Something that feeds off happiness. Yeah. Like, instead of... But an evil entity that feeds yeah. off happiness. Like, it doesn't like make them clown. sad. Like, it doesn't make them that's sad. That's what a clown is. It's a... It, that's what a clown is. Oh, it, well, I mean, but it was still... Not I'm not evil. saying it. Sucking, it sucking is fear a... Sucking down. I can't... But what I'm saying is, is I can't do a clown. big... It's Who feeds thing. off happiness? People are like, this dude's just trying to do a reverse no. Pennywise. <laughs> I'm saying my my from my fear of clowns perspective, that is a that that's what clowns are. Clowns are an evil entity that's wearing a really creepy mask and is like, I'm gonna make you so happy that you explode, man. <laughs> I'm gonna make you so happy that you just die. You pop like a balloon. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna make you explode. I'm gonna give you a heart attack. You know, I wish I wish I had I wish I had existed before John Wayne Gacy to find out if. Because you look back at like the from the twenties yeah, and whatnot, yeah, yeah. those clowns People were love horrible. Clowns. Yeah, but, but they're terrifying. But those clowns look. Right, they look terrifying back then. That's why people like the always like they try to photos. like give explain my fear of clowns. They're like, oh, it's because of this and horror movie clowns and John Wayne Gacy. No, it's because if I look at that, that is not human. That is strange. <laughs> there is something going on behind that. Yes, yes. It's that's like the, the uncanny thing. valley. That's what it, it's. Yeah. It, but that's the thing. It's, Gross. It's, you don't know. It's like yeah. People, it's it's like right now with you know everybody wearing masks. You don't know what they're doing yeah. behind those masks. You know, you don't. You don't well, know. Me, it's lies not. It's not as weight. bad because it's literally half of your face. It's not like a whole bodysuit yeah, and paint I, and everything. I, with with clowns, it's like this whole costume and get up. I'm like, Ugh, what are you hiding? But it, with masks, it's just like it's just half of your face. Yeah, on. but people have been talking to me, and I've been sitting like sticking my tongue out at him and whatnot and just making goofy things. There was a guy on uh, a TikTok who said that this this is gonna be me. Uh, once I can go back to work without a mask, and it's literally yeah, someone else is talking to him. He's like, 
mouthing. I I got I got to I got to tell people since they can't see me. He's like mouthing their words, like mocking them, and they're like, "Dude, what are you doing?" He's like, "Oh, oh I'm I, the, I thought mm, I don't have my mask on." And then you know he does like the tongue stick out and whatnot. He's like, "This is gonna be this is gonna be the the issue when I take when the mask come off." And it, it's true because I've been doing that to people too. I've been like, <laughs> but I'm just oh I'm staring right at. Him, I'm like. You know, I'm doing all kinds of weird stuff, but I'm being quiet. So, uh, but yeah, but definitely there's that. Uh, there's that. I I just wonder if it's just the fear before, of the unknown, right? If before John Wayne Gacy, if there were people who were like, you know, what uh, clowns terrify me? Because ch- I mean, children I mean, have sure, always been scared of clowns. I'm sure there were. It just he kind of amplified that. I'm sure it was a le- not a lesser fear, but a fear that wasn't taken as seriously. Like, the fear of the dark. Like, yeah. I feel like that's just one of those things where people were more like, well, it's just it's just a clown. It's just a guy in a costume. It doesn't really matter. But then after that, people are like, oh, I see what like, you're talking about now. I see. Yeah, because this sorry. one's over here eating pee-pee. Yeah. Like, literally. <laughs> like, he's over there eating penis. So, like, not in a good way. He's over there, like, chopping them off and eating yeah. them. You know, it's the, 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 the clown. Anyway. Yeah. But the... Uh, that's why I'm not scared of, like, Pennywise or, like, Art the Clown or anything. Because I look at those and I see a horror monster. I don't see some... I don't see a, something that is hiding something. I, I just see... You know, yeah, just... I can see it and I see that it is trying to scare me. But the thing with clowns is it's not trying to scare me, but it is. Right. It's, it's it's trying to do the exact opposite. Which it's is trying a, to make which me happy. Which is a very controlling but it's thought. terrifying. <laughs> like a, it's a, that's a very controlling thought when you think about it. Like yeah. you, you have no control over that fear, and there it's a completely irrational fear. It's kind of like me with dolls. Yeah. There, I have never, ever... And, and Child's Play was one of my favorite series of all time. But there's something, and I can do evil dolls. Like yeah, I, because they look evil. Yes, it's, they, it's exactly. Not like they, like, it's not like a porcelain doll that you'd see in your great great grandmother's exactly, attic. Exactly. It, it, you look at Chucky and you go, okay, that is a doll that is designed to be, to be scary. But this little motherfucker sit this porcelain. No, I'm not pointing at anything. Sorry, <laughs> Dan's no. looking over. It's like there's not. I'm just pointing off into like I'm make believe. Yeah. It's like this creepy motherfucker. It's smiling at exactly. It's up to something. It's, yeah. it's a doll. It's an inanimate object. It's not going to come At alive. least with clowns, I, I know it. that it's, it, it is a human that has the possibility to, to cause you harm. It's yeah. like me with spiders. Like, there are spiders out there that will kill you. Yeah. So it's kind of but a rational But most of fear. them won't. It's yeah. true. It's true. Well, you see where it all comes from, and people, I, I'm, I guess I'm letting my, my, my history out here a bit, but when I was a kid... Another kid locked me into a doll closet that was infested with spiders. So it was dolls, spider webs, spiders everywhere, and I was stuck in there for almost an hour, pressed up against the door, just shivering, um, and until finally his dad let his dad let me out because I was literally banging on it, but he'd been out gardening. So he finally came back in and heard me banging, came in and was like, what, what is going on? And I ran out of the, the house screaming. I never went back over there again, never saw him again, never went anywhere near him because uh, the kid didn't even go to my school. Uh, he was just a youth group um, friend or, yeah, quote-unquote friend that I had that I was playing with. I had some terrible friends, man. Anyways, but, yeah, he, he put me in there um, and locked me in. I'm not even sure how he did it, if he jammed something in there. But I couldn't get out. And, but his dad just came and just opened it right up. Um, unless... You know what? Now it that I'm thinking about it, brain his panicking and not the, there might have been a lock the on the outside of the door, and his dad might have done that to him. That might have been what I just thought about that man. Thirty thirty years later, I'm thinking about this. Holy crap! Anyways, we're not gonna get this. Isn't this isn't you know ease trauma cast? <laughs> uh, we're not gonna go through all of my stuff. But is there anything else that you want to talk about as far as The Shining, uh, Doctor Sleep, or anything else Stephen King? Because it might be a while before we talk about King again. Is there anything? I don't think I don't. I haven't watched or read enough to have anything opinion outside of what we talked about. And I think I already yelled about everything. <laughs> I already yelled about everything. Okay, so I guess we're done uh, for this episode. It's. Uh, we're at 53 minutes. I thought we were actually t- closer to, to no, 20. No, because when, when we stopped talking about the book, it had only been like 30 minutes, I think. Okay. Um, well, that's it for this episode of Dan E. Cast. If you guys want to see video, uh, Dan doesn't like being on camera, but if you want to see video of me while we're doing these things, if you want to see my sweaty fat ass sitting over here in the corner, because that's exactly what's happening right now, because we have to have that, the air conditioning off. If you want to see that, let me know. If you're fine with these things, uh, being just audio, or if you want them up on a podcast site somewhere like uh, iTunes or whatever, let me know down there in the doobly doo. Uh, but until next time, I have been E, you have been you, Dan has been. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> we'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.